Holiness and sanctification are two things that a Christian and every Christian ought to be striving towards in his or her uh, spiritual, religious life, if you will. And there have been many books that have been written on the subject, but one book that prominently stands out uh, above all others is this wonderful book right here, Holiness by J.C. Ryle. And it is one of my favorites of Ryle's works. Now, Holiness is a book which consists of 449 pages. It is a cloth-bound book. In this edition, uh, you can also buy it in paperback. I'll link to that in the description as well. This particular edition, as all Banner of Truth hardcover uh, copies or uh, volumes are, is printed by Versa Press in the USA, which is really... USA, how can you beat it? <laughs> now, Ryle lived between 1816 and 1900, and um, if you want more information on him, I have a link in the description to a, um, an outline of his life, all the significant things in his life. Um, a little bit here in the video, he was the first bishop of Liverpool. Um, that's pretty much all I have here for him right now. If you want more information, you can check that down below. Um, this book is Ryle's most popular work, uh, and understandably so. It is um, one of his best. I would only compare The Upper Room to this book. Uh, it is just a fantastic, fantastic volume. So Holiness is a book that is devoted to teaching us how to strive uh, for holiness and how to... Uh, how in our lives um, we can become more sanctified by the Holy Spirit, which is the only way we can be sanctified. Um, and of course, there's no trickery to this. There's no uh, manipulation of the Holy Spirit. Um, we can't force him to do those things for us. But as Ryle points out, you know, this is not a work-based religion. It is um, a grace-based religion, but that doesn't mean that you don't do or that you do nothing. It doesn't mean you do nothing. You still have to uh, do things. And so that's what he talks about in this book, or one thing he talks about in this book. Now, I wanted to read the uh, chapter titles to give you a, um, an idea of what content of this book is really like. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. Uh, sin, sanctification, holiness, the fight, the cost, growth, assurance, Moses, an example, Lot, a beacon, a woman to be remembered, Christ's greatest trophy, the ruler of the waves, the church which Christ builds, visible churches warned, lovest thou me, without Christ, thirst relieved, unsearchable riches, wants of the times, Christ is all, and lastly, extracts from old writers, all of which are excellent chapters. Uh, some of those uh, would be uh, more favorable to me personally, but uh, they're all quite, quite good. Um, and even though this book was written in 1877, it still is 100% applicable to our lives today. I don't think I read a sentence in this book that, um, that I thought, wow, that, that doesn't mean anything today. No, because we are still the same as we were 200 years ago. We're still the same as we were 300. And you could keep going back, but, um, you know, this book, is still 100% relevant to our lives today and to our spiritual lives. Um, we still uh, need the same things, um, and, and Ryle explains uh, our necessities and uh, how we are to um, uh, fill those, fulfill those things with Christ. With Christ is the answer. Um, and so are there uh, better books on this topic? I, I try to answer that question in my book reviews. Um, and there are, of course, as I said in the introduction to this video, many books, many, many books that, that are written on holiness, and I've read many myself, but none really can compete with Ryle's book. Um, if you are looking for uh, a book on holiness or a book on sanctification, a book on um, how to uh, be conformed to the image of Christ, Ryle's holiness is definitely um, the top of the list 
for me anyway. Um, would I buy this book? Absolutely. Uh, this is one of the most helpful books I've ever read out of all the books that I've read. This would be one of the top books ever. Um, I intend to read it many more times. This was my third reading, I want to say, before I reviewed it. Maybe maybe my second. But um, I've been going through it with a friend from church as well, and it's been uh, really helpful to do that as well. But my goal is to read it once a year at a minimum um, throughout the rest of my life because it is such a great uh, help and resource. Um, so a little bit more in depth, that's basically the end of my overall review, but I wanted to read a few quotes that I have written down here from this book, if this is something you're interested in, just to give you an idea of what Ryle really is teaching in this book. So the first thing I have here is, our sins are often as dear to us as our children. And for me, I don't have children, but I could also think of my parents or my best friends, or however I wanted to look at that. But I also understand the love, well, I can't really understand, but I, I have an understanding of the love that parents have for their children. And so um, our sins are often as dear to us as our children. We love them and hug them, cleave to them and delight in them. To part with them is as hard as cutting off a right hand or plucking out a right eye, but it must be done. Parting must come. And what I love about that is, and it basically speaks for itself, is it's just like we love our sin and we um, delight in our sin. We hug our sin. We would never leave our sin. We would never send our sin away. But we must. We must. And then the next quote here is, let us never measure our religion by that of others, and think we are doing enough if we have gone beyond our neighbors. And this really strikes me because I often compare what I'm doing to what everybody else is doing. You know, I'm going far and beyond, you know, what uh, what my friends or my, uh, my, this is a figure of speech, I'm not being literal, but far and beyond what they are doing, and I feel like I'm comfortable with that. I, you know, I'm doing well enough because, um, because I'm doing well, like, you know, more than they are, and that that's just not right. Um, we must not measure <laughs> measure our. We must not measure our religion by that of others, uh, and think we're doing enough just because we're doing more than they are. Um, and that that always that just hit me the first time I read that, and again as I've read over it again. Um, just don't compare. You know, you need to be doing what you need to be doing and don't settle in your mind. Okay, well, they're spending 30 minutes a day doing whatever. So I'm going to spend 45 and I'm more spiritual. It's not how that works. Um, <laughs> the next quote here is, None, generally speaking, do so much for Christ on earth as those who enjoy the fullest confidence of a free entrance into heaven and trust not in their own works, but in the finished work of of Christ. And see here here's this idea again. It is not what you are doing, but what Christ has done that justifies a man. And so you know, stop relying on your work. Stop relying on how much time you read the scriptures or you pray. Yes, those are commandments, I mean, more or less. Yes, those are great things to be doing and very helpful and beneficial and spiritual, if you want to use that word. But it's not so much how much you're doing or what you're doing, but what Christ has done, the finished work of Christ. And this next quote is the longest I have here. But to walk closely with God, to be really spiritually minded, to behave like strangers and pilgrims, to be distinct from the world in employment of time, in conversation and amusements and dress, to bear a faithful witness for Christ in, the, in all places, to leave a savor of our master in every society, to be prayerful, humble, unselfish, good-tempered, quiet, easily pleased, charitable, patient, meek, to be jealously afraid of all manner of sin, and be trembling and trembling alive uh, to our danger from the world, 
these are still rare things. They are not common among those who are called true Christians, and worst of all, the absence of them is not felt or bewailed as it should be. And there, um, he's basically just applying the fruit of the Spirit. The fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Um, he's applying those things and saying, these things, even in so-called true Christians, true Christians, you're not seeing the fruit of those uh, of the Spirit there in, in those people. Why not? It's rare, and it shouldn't be. Um, and true Christians, true Christians who are living in the Spirit, the Spirit in them, the, the fruit of the Spirit should be there. And that's what Ryle's getting at there. And then I have one last quote, and it says, and I leave you with this thought. This is fantastic. Look less at yourself and more at Christ, and you will find besetting sins dropping off and leaving you, and your eyes enlightened more and more every day. God bless you. I hope you have a good week.